Okay, so I'm going to try to describe to you guys what to do for this um, vital capacity lung lab using a balloon. So what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to be figuring out the amount of air that you move in and out of your lungs while breathing normally is called tidal volume. This amount of air provides enough oxygen for a person who is at rest. So like right now, I'm just breathing normally, right? So that's my tidal volume. It is possible to inhale and exhale more forcefully, which we all know we can do. The maximum amount of air moved in and out of the lungs is called vital capacity, which is the amount of air a person can expel from the lungs at maximum inhalation. So you would take a deep breath in and then you blow it all the way out. And that's what we're going to be doing with the lab today. So you basically need balloons, a ruler, um, meter stick, doesn't matter, or like a tape measure. You just have to make sure you can convert it into centimeters. All right, then you have to do a prediction. Which factors have the most effect a person's, which factors affect the, a person's vital capacity? So you just have to rank an order where you think what affects it the most? The weight, the sex, the activity level, the height of the person, and the age. Okay, so you can't go wrong or right on that. Just make a prediction. Okay, so then now consider the factor you think you will have the greatest effect on both vital capacity and tidal volume. Remember, tidal volume, just breathing normally, and then the maximum amount you can breathe, like breathe in and then out. Okay, now, here's what you guys have to do. So in this activity, you will be measuring the vital capacity of members of the class, which you won't be able to do. So you can do family members. If you guys go out and get bags of balloon at the dollar store, so a dollar for a bag, I'm gonna be doing this with my family. And if you do not have that opportunity, you can go ahead and use our data. If you have any breathing difficulties, asthma or other conditions, you should not participate, okay? You'll just be using the diameter of a balloon and the graph shown to estimate your capacities. Okay, so you have three subjects. This is fun. I would highly suggest making your siblings do this and then you guys can have fun with balloon wars. But you have to then record the data, which is their height, age, sex, and activity level. And you will do that on the second page. Okay, so you can see where you have different test subjects. You can include yourself. Right? So you're gonna write those first things there. And then when you blow up the balloon, you have the balloon diameter, the volume from the graph, and then there's a calculator. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this. So once you get that figured out, you're gonna measure the vital capacity. Remember, we're measuring vital capacity. You're gonna take a deep, okay, we wanna stretch the balloon though, right? Cause you want it to be kind of more accurate. So kind of stretch it a couple times. Take a deep breath in and then exhale into the balloon. And then you're gonna to wanna to tie off the end of the balloon. It says pinch it, but it's just easier for you guys. If you can tie it or if you're strong, you can hold it without the air coming out, go ahead and do. But you want the diameter in centimeters because Look at this little thing is centimeters, okay? And then what you'll do, you have to then convert the diameter to the volume. So let's just say you measured after you blew it up, you know, it tells you how to get the measurement. So you blow it up and then you're gonna have your metric ruler and you're basically measuring, sometimes you can take a flat piece of paper or something flat and strong and then kind of get that centimeter amount because you're trying to get the diameter of this balloon and then once you get that diameter in centimeters you would come over and you would just follow it along on this graph and then once you found the spot you would go straight directly over and let's just say 3500 if I measured 19 centimeters okay so then that's your volume with that you can then record the balloon diameter and the volume from the graph. And then you have one more thing you have to do. 
Okay, so we already did the diameter to the volume. And then now you have to do an estimated vital capacity. Estimated vital capacity. They have calculators online. And there's this link here. You'll see it on your document. You should be able to click on it and go right to that calculator. And then using the data from this, right, from all of that, you should then be able to do your estimated volume from the calculator and put those in that category. Okay, and so then you just, you wanna be able to compare what's true to what's estimated with your test subjects. Okay, so that part's super easy. You're just recording data, putting it in the charts, and then there's just questions you wanna be able to answer, okay? Number one, what's the difference between tidal volume and vital capacity? Right here, answers are right there. Okay. Suggest a way you could measure a person's tidal volume. Well, think about it, okay? And then compare your subject's vital capacity and variables based on height, weight, sex, etc. Based on the limited data, which factors have the greatest impact on tidal volume? And you just kind of, you're going to try to figure out based off your family members um, or seeing what mine, what happened with mine. What variables of your test subjects were necessary to input into the calculator? That one, easy. You're going to see that on the website. So then from that, which variables seem to have the least effect on a person's vital capacity? Okay. And then how might an athlete's vital capacity compare to a non-athlete? Explain this. Hopefully you guys can kind of understand that, you know, you can train your lung muscles and whatnot to be able to take in more oxygen. Okay. Now, do you think the person with the greatest vital capacity can hold their breath longer than those with lower vital capacity? So you just have to kind of answer what you think. But you have to consider the difference between internal respiration and external respiration. And remember, we have lots of muscles that uh, pertain to how we breathe. Okay, and so I'll explain why lung capacity may not have a great effect on the length of time you can hold your breath. And if you guys know anything about like world champion um, breath holders or people who can die for a long time, it's a training process. So keep that in mind. Okay, so that's it going through that lab, and then we're going to get some data going for you guys. All right, here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Got to get the face, Isaac. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to take the measurement Everybody has a tape measure and everybody has something flat. Or you could use a, a longer ruler, but this one's too short, so it went ahead. So we are going to use the centimeters on this tape measure, and I'm just simply gonna put it flat, and then I'm gonna record how many centimeters that is on the tape measure, and then that's your measurement. Easy. Blow it up.